everyone. This video is going to be about the Magic Kingdom. And I'm going to give you a brief overview of the Magic Kingdom. And stay tuned to the end because I'm going to give you a couple of tips to help you get through the Magic Kingdom. Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and check out my Facebook page, Vacation with the Magic by Shelby. I always post any discounts that are available and Disney pics, and it's just a great page to like and share. So we're just going to dive right in. I have notes, so I'm going to keep going back. I think most of it is up here, but I just want to give you accurate information. So the Magic Kingdom opened on October 1st, 1971, and I'm going to date myself. It wasn't 1971. It was a little bit after, but the first time I went to Walt Disney World, the Magic Kingdom was the only park that was open, and it will hold a special place in my heart, and it is full of magic, and I just absolutely find it to actually be the happiest place on Earth. There are six lands in the Magic Kingdom, and the first one is Main Street, USA. And you have Fantasyland, Tomorrowland, Liberty Square, Frontierland, and Adventureland. So we're just going to start with Main Street, USA. Now, in Main Street, USA, you have shops, entertainment, restaurants, and there are some rides. When you first enter the park, and this was the big hoo <laughs> you will go underneath the railroad station, which is one of the rides, one of the stops on the Walt Disney Railroad, and you come around a small hub where the American flag is, and then when you come around and you turn and boom, there it is, Cinderella's Castle, the big show, the thing that everybody is there to see. And people actually call the Magic Kingdom sometimes just Disney. They just refer to as Disney or Disney World, which is okay because that's what the Magic Kingdom represents. So in Main Street, you will find the Baby Care Center and the First Aid Station, and they are located next to Crystal Palace. So when you go down Main Street, you will turn left at Casey's, and you will go just around the bend there. You will see Crystal Palace, and there is a bathroom area. It's kind of like it goes in, and there's a fountain that is right outside. And in that area, there's a sign out front too, is the Baby Care and First Aid. If you need to rent a stroller or an ECV, you can do that when you enter the turnstiles before you enter the park, and they are to the right. So Main Street USA is themed after Walt Disney's hometown, Marceline, Missouri. And that's what it looks like. It looks like you took a step back in time. The music is absolutely amazing and wonderful, and it makes you so happy. They have, the buildings are not built to scale, so they look like they are, but as they go up, they're actually built smaller because nothing, nothing can tower over Cinderella's castle. So the rides that are available on Main Street USA include the Walt Disney World Railroad. It is a stop. You have the fire truck, the jitney, horse-drawn carriage, and they can pick you up near the flagpole and it will take you up Main Street and drop you off in the hub in front of the castle. Or they'll pick you up in the hub and bring you back down to the flagpole on Main Street. There are a lot of shops in the Magic Kingdom and I'm going to direct you to my blog at www.loveandmama.com for a list of them all and what they sell because there are a lot. The big one would be the Emporium. And it is to your left, sorry, left on Main Street. I always do that. And it takes up a big part of Main Street. It is huge. And it pretty much has everything, if you, except for like the finer, like do, finer things. Um, you can find them across the way at Box Office Gifts and Uptown Jewelers. But if you are looking for a certain, if you are looking for any kind of Disney, Disney souvenir, the Emporium is a really good place to check out. Another great attraction, I don't know what to call it, it's Sorcerers of the Kingdom cards, and they are at the Fire Hall. It is free, and it is an interactive card game that you can play around 
most of the Magic Kingdom. They will give you a map telling you where these things are. They will hook you up. They will show you how it's done and everything before they send you off. There is another spot in Liberty Square, but the fire hall is like the main hub to get your cards and everything. And like I said, it is free and it's just, you don't have to complete it all in a day. You can complete it when you come back because you know you'll be back and you know just you could take your time maybe you only want to do it once maybe it's not for you that's up to you and your family but it's just another fun interactive game in Walt Disney World entertainment in the Main Street area you have the Dapper Dans which are a barbershop quartet which are just incredible and they sing Disney tunes they sing show tunes during the holidays they sing holiday tunes they are just amazing and they sh you should check them out. It's just incredible. You also have you also have a pianist who plays near Casey's Corner. You'll see the piano outside and they just play Disney tunes and show tunes and it's just lovely. It's so classic. It's it's just a great way to add atmosphere to Main Street. And I mentioned the flagpole before. There is a flag retreat ceremony, and they do pick a either serving member of the military or a veteran member of the military to perform in this ceremony where they bring the flag down for the day. So it usually takes place, I would check the times guide, 5, 6 o'clock in the evening, depending on sunset. And it's just a nice way to honor our country. A great piece of entertainment is Streetmosphere. And in the Magic Kingdom, that is the citizens of Main Street. You have the mayor, the fire chief, the news reporter, ladies who lunch. It is absolutely fantastic. They are hilarious. And they are just walking around, interacting. Some people don't even notice that they're there. You will notice what they're wearing is kind of like, wait a minute, like that's not, they're in a costume of some sort, right? And that's how you can tell who they are or if they're being like really loud and out there. But they just walk around with everybody else. There's not a line to meet them. They interact with guests. And Streetmosphere is one of the best things about Walt Disney World. Now, as you come down Main Street, there is Cinderella's Castle. And we're just going to include that into Main Street rather than include that elsewhere. Some of it will be included into Fantasyland. <laughs> But for now, the front of the castle is included in Main Street in the hub area where you'll see the Walt and Mickey statue. There is a stage in front of the castle and they do do a morning show now at the Magic Kingdom. And if the Magic Kingdom opens at 9, the morning show is around 8.55 in the morning. I will give you a tip about this at the end. So, so the morning show happens on the stage and throughout the day, you have Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair, which is a stage show that happens in front of the castle. And it happens all year long, but they update it seasonally. So it changes with the seasons, which makes it absolutely wonderful. The costumes are incredible, the decorations are incredible, and they're usually seasonal. It is a really, really cute show about Mickey and his friends gathering everybody together for this, you know, giant festival and it's just lovely and you get to see characters that you normally don't see throughout the parks. Restaurants on Main Street. There are two kinds. There's quick service and there's table service. And quick service, I'll put the card up here for the quick service dining plan just to give you an idea about quick service restaurants. They are, you do not need a reservation. They are like fast food, but they're not fast food. You walk up, you order, you go to the counter, you know, you wait for your, you pay. <laughs> you go to the counter, you wait for your order, they give you a tray of food, you go sit down. Table service, you do need reservations. 180 days out, and I'll put a card up here for the, um, the regular dining plan, because that goes into both of them a little bit. And table service, you seat, sit down, you are waited on by a waiter, waitress, and they take your order, you know, they serve you like a regular restaurant. Table service restaurants on Main Street are Crystal Palace, which has breakfast, lunch, and dinner with Winnie the Pooh and friends. Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Piglet, Eeyore. You have the Plaza Restaurant, Tony's Town Square, which has a Lady in the Tramp theme, and I'm going to direct you to my blog as well, and this will have what kind of food they have at these restaurants. Are you serious right now? 
For quick service, you have the Main Street Bakery, which has a Starbucks inside of it, so it's great for that extra jolt of caffeine, because let's face it, Disney can be overstimulating, and sometimes you just need a little bit more caffeine than normal. Um, you have the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. I highly recommend this. This was fantastic. My kids loved it. All the Sundays are amazing, and it's just, it's, it's a great little stop for a break in the day. You also have Casey's, and they have hot dogs and stuff like that, and it's baseball themed, and it's adorable, and it's a great way, and the hot dogs are humongous too, so you can even sp split one of those puppies. There are two parades in the Magic Kingdom currently. One of them's kind of a parade, actually, and one of them is actually a parade. So they take they start in Frontierland and they end in Main Street, but I'm just going to mention them with Main Street. You have the Festival of Fantasy, which currently is the 3 o'clock parade, but beginning in August, it will be the 2 o'clock parade. So definitely check out the Times Guide for that one. It is fantastic. If you have never seen it, I'll put a card up here. We enjoyed it so much, and it's bright and colorful, and it's hilarious, and the music is fantastic. It is a, it is a great, great parade. The other one is the, the other one is the Move It, Shake It, Dance, and Play, and it's kind of a parade, but they stop throughout the way, and they bring kids and adults in, and you dance, and you get to dance with some of the characters, and it's a great show. Check out the Times Guide for that as well. In the evening, there is the fireworks show, Happily Ever After, and it is projections and fireworks, and it takes you through lots of Disney favorites, and it is a must-see. There is no way to describe it. You have to see this in person. It is the best fireworks show ever. Like, you have to see it in person to enjoy it to its fullest. The next land up is Fantasyland, and when you come down Main Street, Fantasyland is to on the right in the hub, and it looks like an outside, part of it looks like an outside um, carnival, I don't want to say carnival, I want to say like the old, I guess carnival, yeah, uh, but in the new Fantasyland you have it, they themed it more, and you have the Little Mermaid area, you have a Beauty and the Beast area, and then you have Pete's Silly Circus, with the big top and everything in Dumbo. So there is a ton of rides and attractions in Fantasyland and New Fantasyland, which I'm not calling it New Fantasyland anymore. The whole thing is Fantasyland. There is the, I'm gonna try to do this my memory. I did go to my next tip. You have Peter Pan's Flight. Classic, classic, must ride, must fast pass. Unless you get the first thing because the interactive queue is really cool. And if you've never seen it, you have to see it. It's like you're going through the Darling House, and then you get sprinkled with pixie dust. All this other stuff happens. I'm not going to ruin it. But you get sprinkled with pixie dust as so you can fly on the ship for the ride. And there's a lot of other stuff that happens in that queue as well. Check it out. You have, it's across the from it, you have It's a Small World, another classic, easygoing boat ride. You have Prince Charming's Carousel which is a carousel. And near there you have Princess Fairy Tale Hall, which currently you can meet Rapunzel and Tiana on one side, and on the other side you can meet Cinderella and Elena. And you can get fast passes for those as well. Fast pass information's on my blog. Check it out. Next week I'm gonna actually mention stuff, so. You have Mickey's Philhar Magic, which is a great 4D show with the glasses and you sit and watch the movie and it takes you through with Donald Duck who is actually the main character in the show and it's really cute and there are lots of classic Disney characters that everybody enjoys. Be careful though they do spray water at you so that can be startling for some little children. Just an FYI it's if you're in the seat it's too it's like in between the seats it's in between the seats so just be careful so that way maybe you put your hand over to something just for startling children. Then around the corner you have the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. And now Winnie the Pooh is one of my favorites and I have, will ride this ride by myself. Yes, I will amongst all the three-year-olds. Hey! It is a cute little ride and it's just easy peasy. You're in a honeypot. 
you know, it's just a, it's a darling ride. You have the Mad Tea Party, which are teacups. So if you get queasy easy, queasy easy, <laughs> like my husband does, he rides the teacups, but he, you know, and then he's like, I gotta go sit for a while. So, because they can go fast, and my daughter loves it when they go really fast, so he tries to make her happy and then gets nauseous in the process, which, bless him, it's very sweet, but just be wary. The favorite thing of Fantasyland is Seven Doors Mine Train, and it is a mini roller coaster. It is a roller coaster, and there are a couple drops. I would not consider them to be big drops, um, obviously with the roller coasters that you know, they've got going today, like Six Flags in Jersey has Kingdom Ka. Like, this is nothing. Mm. You know, it's really adorable, and there's a great little thing in the middle. I'm not going to spoil it. And there's a great part at the end. And even the queue is cute, but I would fast pass it. Across the way, you have Enchanted Tales with Belle. And this is a must for any princess in your group. You go through Maurice's house, and you are... You are helping Belle. You're surprising Belle with a celebration of the day that Belle and Beast fell in love. And I'll put a little card here. It is adorable. And the kids get to participate. And then at the end, they have their picture taken with Belle. Moving on, then you have Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid. And this is a ride. You board a clamshell and you go kind of through a very brief synopsis of the Little Mermaid movie. And right beside that is the Little Mermaid Ariel meet and greet where you get to meet Ariel in her mermaid attire, and it's sweet and lovely, as all the princesses are. Keep walking, and you will see the big circus welcome sign. And in this area, you have Dumbo, a classic Disney ride. Inside the circus tent, you can meet the great Goofini, the great Donaldo, Minnie with her poodles, and Daisy the Fortune Teller. There is also the Barnstormer, which is Goofy's children's roller coaster. Very tiny roller coaster. And if your child is they like hesitant, like they want to ride it, or they have an older sibling who wants to ride it, but you know they're not gonna like any like the drop, then I recommend sitting in the front. <laughs> and I know that's kind of because you go over. But when you go over, my daughter and I sat in the front, and when you go over, you're at the bottom before the caboose hits the top of the hill. So you don't ever go over the drop. You kind of slowly go down the drop at like snail's pace. So You also have a stop for the Walt Disney World Railroad as well in Fantasyland, and that is back by in the circus area. Also in the circus area in the middle is the Casey Jr. Splash, Splash and Soak Station. And this is a great interactive water play area. Be careful though, because children do like to run around like little maniacs, so you know, just be careful. Another great experience, I wanna call it, is the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. And this takes place on the fantasy side, fantasy land side of the castle in the back between the carousel and the castle. And this is where your little girl gets to become a princess. And there are lots of options to choose from. You do have to pay for this experience. You can bring your own dress. They will give you a dressing room to change into your own dress if you do not want to purchase one there. So it is a great, great experience. My daughter used to do it, but now she's nine and she no longer wants to do it. And... Well, it's a little sad. Restaurants in Fantasyland. For table service, you have Cinderella's Royal Table, and that is across the way in the castle. Of, across the way of Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique in, the castle, in Cinderella's castle. And this is the hot ticket to get. You have to make that reservation 180 days in advance. It is two table service credits if you are using the dining plan. It is lovely and it is nice to eat inside the castle. You, the food is okay, the food is good, but you are paying for the fact that you are eating inside the castle and you get to meet the princesses. Cinderella in the foyer, and then upstairs we have met Snow White, Ariel, Aurora, and Jasmine. So it's a great meet and greet area, and it's just lovely because then you can look out over Fantasyland too through the big windows. A another table service is Be Our Guest Dinner. Only the dinner is table service. 
Now, be our guest is tricky because you have to make a reservation for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but only dinner is table service, and after you eat, you are able, if you choose, to meet the beast in his study. So then that's the only place where the beast is right now, so it's a nice little bonus. For quick service, you have Be Our Guest breakfast and lunch, the Cheshire Cafe, which serves lemonade and snacks, and sometimes they have like little breakfast items, uh, the Friar's Nook, which is known for their mac and cheese, Gaston's Tavern. Gaston's Tavern is incredible. Even if you're not eating there, you should go in, take a peek. It's really, really cute. The theming is amazing, and they have cinnamon rolls as big as your head, so can't go wrong with that, right? You have Pinocchio Village House, which has flatbreads and meatball subs and stuff like that. Prince Eric's Village Market, which has fresh fruit. Storybook Treats, which has ice cream, so that's great. The next land up is Tomorrowland, and Tomorrowland is on the back side of Fantasyland, kind of, sort of. Like if you're by the teacups, then yeah, it starts to mold into Tomorrowland, and they have some rides and attractions. Tomorrowland is based off of like how we thought the future would be in the 1960s, we being the royal we, because... <laughs> I wasn't born yet, but some of you might have been, so yeah. Rides and attractions include the Tomorrowland Speedway. Yeah, it's my least favorite ride in the whole, all of Disney World, but whatever. In this ride, you drive a race car around the track, and my kids love it because they are tall enough to drive the race cars themselves. They just need an adult to be in the car with them. And it has the thing in the middle, so you just you bump it, the guide. So you actually don't drive the car, but it always feels like we're going to jump the little thing. So my son likes to make me want to throw up. Anyway, you have Stitch's Great Escape, which is open seasonally. And that takes you on this Stitch has escaped and you're trying to hunt him down. It's not a ride. I'll be honest. If you ride it, if you have the chance to ride it, because rumor has it it's going away and they might put a Wreck-It Ralph ride in there. It's not a ride. You literally, you sit and the harnesses come down and they can weigh heavy on you. So what I like to do is when I sit before they come down, is kind of like put my hands here and then the harnesses come down on my hands and then once they clicked and then you have the space because you don't go anywhere. You sit in there, the seat, and you, oh, it goes dark, like pitch black at one time. You can't even see and you'll smell things and you'll hear things. And that's it. You don't go anywhere. You're sitting in a theater seat. I don't know why they call it a ride or an attraction, but it is. Across the way, you have the Monster Inc. Laugh Floor. And this is hysterical. And this is a show. And it's so funny. And it's adorable. And they pick on members of the audience. And you can text in your you know, joke beforehand. And they might tell it on the screen. And it's really, really stinking cute. You have Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, which is great. It's like an older version of Toy Story Midway Mania, which I'll get into another video with Hollywood Studios. And you get a blaster and you, you know, you're shooting Zerg and all these targets and you're trying to defeat Zerg and I can never get a high score. I mean, my son was five and he got Galactic Hero. I don't know what he did. But, you know, mom's over here trying to break 100,000 and my son's at 999,999. Yeah. <laughs> Then across the way, you have the Astro Orbiter, and the Astro Orbiter, you need to get into an elevator and go up to. You'll see it. It is up top. It spins in a circle, as well as you can make it go up and down if you choose to. Behind that is the big ride in Tomorrowland, and that would be Space Mountain. And this one people love and enjoy. It is a classic ride, and it is a lot of fun. So in this area is also the People Mover, and the People Mover is a nice, wonderful, relaxing ride. It is a continuous moving car, and you just go around, and they talk about Tomorrowland, and it's just a nice way to cool off, even when it's raining. It's just a relaxing ride for the afternoon. Also, then you have the Carousel of Progress, and this first debuted at the World Fair in 1964. And you travel through the, you know, the decades, the 20s, the 40s, kind of present day, and they talk about technology and how it's helping people, and it's just adorable. It's a really nice air conditioning place, and it's a 
great place to breastfeed. <laughs> so if you have a baby, you know, if you're breastfeeding, it is a great place because it's dark, it's quiet, it's usually not crowded, you know, it's air conditioned, it's, so it's cooling and it's just, you just get to sit there and you got to get 20, 25 minutes where it's a great place just to just be in a nice, cold, air conditioned area to breastfeed. Shops. And I'm going to direct you to my blog for that, but you have um, the Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin right after it. There's toys and stuff like that. Mickey Star Traders has some cute things, Stitch and stuff like that. Um, Tomorrowland Light and Power Company, which is actually right outside of Space Mountain, has magic bands. That's where you can pick up a fuel rod if you need to change out your fuel rod. Space Mountain merchandise. The restaurants in Tomorrowland are all quick service. So you have Cosmic Rays, which has a little bit of everything, literally. And it can get pretty crowded in there too, so I recommend going there on an off time if you can. You have Anti-Gravity's Galactic Goodies, and that's ice cream and sweet treats. The Cool Ship has pretzels and drinks. The Lunching Pad has hot dogs, so they do little, you know, little meals. And then the Tomorrowland Terrace has sandwiches and stuff like that. The next land is Liberty Square, and this is my favorite land, and it is themed around Re Revolutionary War times. You'll see the one if by land, two if by sea, lights in the window, they have the tree, the Liberty Bell, it is just adorable, the River of Pooh. That's right, if you did not know. <laughs> Liberty Square into Frontierland, the pavement changes color, and in the middle, there is like this different color of pavement, right? That's supposed to represent long time ago when they you just used to have the sewer right down the middle of town that's what that's supposed to represent takes the magic right out of it doesn't it <laughs> so the rise of attractions in liberty square you have the hall of presidents which is a great air conditioned area to just chill um it's not my favorite patriotic one my favorite one is in epcot i will get to that later you have the Haunted Mansion, which if you've been watching me, you know, it's my favorite ride. My ashes will be buried there someday. I know, it's illegal. Mm. But, you know, I kid. Um, I would ride this ride 20 times in a row, and I'm actually doing a solo trip coming up that I'm going to ride it whenever I want, because it's just me. Uh, and that is a non, I don't think it's scary, but some children do can find it scary. There are ghosts, they're not real ghosts, you know, um, and they're dancing and they're being silly too. So that's how I used to play it off when my kids were little, like, look, this the ghost is being silly. So when they wrote it, when they were babies, they were like, oh yeah, you know, you don't have to look, you know, you can close your eyes, kid. I'm riding this ride. So, you know, <laughs> But, you know, now that they're just, they're seven and nine, it's my, one of my son's favorite rides, so. And then Liberty Square Riverboat. And the riverboat will take you around Tom Sawyer Island. And it used to have narration by Mark Twain. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So it's really cool. And you get to see things. There's actually scenery built for this riverboat ride that you can't see anywhere else. There are two shops in Liberty Square. You have Memento Mori's, Haunted Mansion themed. It's right outside the ride. It's really cool. And you have the Ye old Christmas shop all year long. Find your ornaments. They will even put your name on them. We have a wedding one from our honeymoon and they put our name on it and the date and then keepsake it's in my china cabinet and that's where it will remain forever the restaurants in liberty square you have one table service and that is the liberty tree tavern and they serve like thanksgiving dinner it is family style you put it in front of you you help yourself you get as much as you want you do have to make reservations 180 days out even though it's not a hot spot it is then one of the ones that people pick because they couldn't get in somewhere else and some people, you know, it is actually not bad. It's good food and it's comforting food. And it's actually really nice. I prefer this restaurant in the winter. I don't know why, just do, even though it's Florida and it's not cold, but it is really, it's really good comfort food. 
quick service, you have Columbia Harbor House, and this is based off of New England, and they have a lobster roll and fish and stuff like that, so it's really cool. Um, you have one that's open seasonally, and that is the Diamond Horseshoe. That can be table service or quick service. Sometimes they take reservations, and sometimes they don't. Depends on what they think is going to happen crowd-wise. Liberty Square Market is open market. They have a lot of fruit, and they actually do like a baked potato and stuff like that, and it drinks and stuff like that. So it's a great place to go in and grab something and go. And then you have Sleepy Hollow, which is just adorable. There is seating around the corner of Sleepy Hollow, and they have waffle sandwiches. They have a Nutella one with fruit on it. They have a spicy chicken one that's really great too. So it's a great place to check out for a snack or for a meal. So next up is Frontierland, and this is my favorite area of the whole park. Like Adventureland, probably from Pirates, Frontierland, and then Liberty Square. I like how it looks during the day. I like how it looks during the night. I love the music. It's just, this is my favorite part of the Magic Kingdom. Uh, the rides and attractions, there is a stop for the Walt Disney World Railroad. There is Big Thunder Mountain, which is the runaway, you know, mine train, and it is a roller coaster. It's more of a roller coaster than Seven Doors Mine Train and the Barnstormer, so keep that in mind. Next to that is Splash Mountain, and Splash Mountain is based on an old movie, Song of the South, um, and it's about Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear and... They did a fantastic job. There is the big, it is a flume, log flume ride, so there is one big drop at the end. Um, and there are, a couple, there are a couple little drops throughout, but the theming is incredible and totally makes this ride, and this ride is really long, so it's really good. Now, people rush to these ri two rides when the park opens, so keep that in mind. Country Bear Jamboree. Now, Country Bear Jamboree is not a ride. It is an attraction, and it is old. Yes, it is a classic. It's not old. It's retro. That's right. So you're sitting there, and you're watching these bears sing and have a show, and it's, it's really cute. Yes, you can sometimes hear their mouths squeaking and moving. It's part of the charm. I love it. I think it's amazing, and, you know, it takes me back to being five years old all over again. Right next to that, you have the Frontier Shooting Arcade, where you know you put your money in the arcade and then you can shoot all of the targets. That's been open, hit or miss lately, so I don't know if they're thinking about shutting it down or not. So that's really cool to check out and take a nice break. Now, as I mentioned, the Liberty Square Riverboat goes around Tom Sawyer Island, and Tom Sawyer Island is part of Frontierland. You have to go down and get on a raft and one of the drivers will drive you across to Tom Sawyer Island. This is a great spot to take a break in the afternoon, especially if you have children. Can't think of any right now. It's summer, so they're like right there. If you, <laughs> if you have children who just like all of a sudden you gotta go, 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 go. You know, they need to burn off some of that energy. You can get to Tom Sawyer Island and as long as, you know, as long as you're within my eyesight, go run. And then once we hit the fort, go ahead. I'll just sit right here. Run around. Go right ahead. Have fun. You know, so it is a great place. And there's a lot of exploring to do on the island. There are a couple shows in Frontierland and these are hit in this as well. Sometimes they're there. Sometimes they're not there. I don't know what's going on. You have the Notorious Banjo Brothers and they play like honky tonky country music, classics, and then you have a dance party where you have um, cowboy line dancing, and sometimes you'll see the bears from Country Bear Jamboree be there as well. Shops, there's Big Owls, and that has camera accessories and snacks and stuff like that. There's the Briar Patch outside of Splash Mountain for your souvenirs. And then you have the Frontier Trading Post for pins and magic bands and more snacks and goodies, as well as there are lots of carts in Frontierland as well that sells snacks and hot dogs and pretzels and drinks and then little souvenirs. Restaurants. You have two that are carts. Westward Ho sells snacks and Golden, the Golden Oak Post which has like waffle fries and stuff like that. 
the big quick service restaurant in Frontierland is Pecos Bills and that you go in and there is lots of seating. There's some seating outside and there's a lot of seating inside as well. They have changed their menu. They used to be like burgers and stuff like that. Now they have more of Mexican. They do burrito, which I highly recommend by the way. That burrito is incredible and they do like a rice bowl. So they have changed their menu recently, but I think for the better. The final land in the Magic Kingdom is Adventureland. And Adventureland is home to some great rides and attractions. You have the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. And if you've never seen the Swiss Family Robinson movie, I highly, highly recommend it. The book is good as well. You get to walk up its stairs. So if you have mobility issues, then this is not the attraction for you because the whole thing is stairs. You go up in the treehouse and look how they lived on in Swiss Family Robinson. There is Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. And this ride is a classic. And the birds sing and talk and Walt himself works on this ride at one point. So it is a must, must see in Adventureland. You have to see it at least once and you're not gonna get the song out of your head. Jungle Cruise, ah, oh, Jungle Cruise. It's campy, it's punny, it's adorable. It's really cool too if you can ride it during the day and at night. And it kind of gives you two different experiences. The Magic Carpets of Aladdin, and this is kind of like the Dumbo type of ride where you go around in a circle and you can even control if you tilt and if you go up and down as well. So I forget what it is. People in the front control, I think, up and down, and people in the back control tilt or vice versa but you get the idea. So if you have two children who like to fight about what height they should be at and what tilt they should be at, well then, you know, at least put one adult in the seat with each of them and, you know, hope for the best. <laughs> the creme de la creme of this area is Pirates of the Caribbean and I love this ride. It is my second favorite ride in the Magic Kingdom. It's probably my second favorite ride in Walt Disney World. And Jack Sparrow is in the ride now. I mean, he's been for a while. And recently they added a ride photo. So when you're on the ride and you see the skeleton sailing his ship through the storm, there's a talking skull to your left. He says a couple words and then his eyes flash. That's taking a picture. Because lately, this is brand spanking new, like this week. I've just been coming out with people doing this because they don't know it's there. So that's just my little tip. The show in Adventureland is Captain Jack's Pirate Tutorial. And this is a fantastic, fantastic show. And in it, Captain Jack and his first mate, Knack, pull about four or five kids in the beginning up on stage. And they teach these kids how to be pirates. And then after that, any kid who wants to can come up on stage and get a little certificate, learn how to be a pirate, take the pirate oath. It's really, really adorable. Shops in Adventureland include Acraba Bazaar. You have the shop outside of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, which has a lot of pirate stuff. You have a sunglass hut. Yes, you do. You have Zanzibar Trading Company, which has apparel. You have a collectible store as well. So go to my blog and check out the names of the stores and what they have. Restaurants. There is Tortuga Tavern and Tortuga Tavern used to have what Pecos Bill has now. Now Tortuga Tavern has Pecos Bill's kind of old menu where they have burgers and hot dogs and nuggets. You have Aloha Isle and Aloha Isle is the place to get a Dole Whip. Sure, you can get it at other places in Walt Disney World now, but Aloha Isle is the original place to get a Dole Whip. And if you don't know what a Dole Whip is, it is pineapple sunshine. All I'm going to say, you have to try it out for yourself. Also, one that people swear by is the citrus swirl. And the citrus swirl is orange and vanilla together. And it makes a lovely creamsicle if you want. And that is at the Sunshine Tree Terrace in Adventureland. The only table service in Adventureland is the Jungle Navigation Company Limited Skipper Canteen. Say that a bunch of times. I just call it the Skipper Canteen because, whoo, not going to happen. Skipper Canteen reservation should be made at 180 days out. And 
this table service is like no other table service. They just don't have the standard table service food. They are outside of the box. It is based on the Jungle Cruise and the menu is based on all the areas where the Jungle Cruise explores. And it is, I love it. They have curry, they have spicy, they have non-spicy, they have chicken, they have pork. It is incredible. You should just give it a try. And when you do for dessert, I highly, highly recommend the Congolouche. In Adventureland, there is a great experience as well and that is called Pirates League. And in Pirates League, it is for boys and girls, and your children may get dressed up like a pirate, a mermaid, whatever they choose. It is also available for adults as well. It is an extra cost, but it is cheaper than Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, and it's a great alternative. So, my tips for the Magic Kingdom. My first tip is about the morning show. Now, the morning show, like I said, we usually kick off at 8.55 in the morning if the park opens at 9 for a standard day. And before park opening, now guests are allowed into the Main Street area at 8 o'clock in the morning. And they can peruse the shops, grab something at, you know, the Main Street Bakery, Starbucks, if you like. Also, the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor serves breakfast. Yes, they do. They have Mickey waffles, and you can get that with sausage or bacon. They have a donut sundae. And if you get the donut sundae, you need to send me a picture of you eating this thing. Because nobody I know will get the donut sundae. They always get the Mickey waffles. I don't know. I must, I don't know. You can also get cereal in the Mickey Pants. So the Mickey Pants where you get the special ice cream sundae, you can get cereal in it as well and just, you know, have a lovely breakfast on Main Street. My second tip for the Magic Kingdom is in the afternoon when it gets miserably, miserably hot, especially June, July, August, you know, half of September, maybe the back end of May, I highly, highly recommend hitting the People Mover. The Carousel of Progress, Mickey's Philhar Magic, Country Berry Jamboree, Monster's Laugh Floor. They are great air-conditioned areas where you can sit and take a very, very nice break from the heat. Also, for the Magic Kingdom, you have the luxury of having five resorts close by. By Monorail, Contemporary, Polynesian, Grand Floridian. By Boat, Wilderness Lodge, and Fort Wilderness. So if you cannot get that reservation that you wanted, check out the five resorts around. You will find some great, great options of places to eat. And that goes on, my next tip piggybacks kind of on that one, is you need to make those reservations 180 days out for table service restaurants, especially Be Our Guest, which I know is quick service at breakfast and lunch, but you still have to make the reservations. Cinderella's Royal Table, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. You make it 180 days out, okay? They go fast. And Pirates League. That one now is becoming more and more popular as well. In my next video next week, I'm going to discuss the Magic Kingdom must-dos and my top three fast passes for the Magic Kingdom, which is a little hard to do because the Magic Kingdom has a lot of choices, but I'm going to give you my top three. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.